<laughs> she's used to it, you know. <laughs> so, so tell me um, a little bit about the the community that you're involved in locally. So no, not necessarily the political bit. No. no well, I, I, the sports club, the you know the local. Yeah. Community. Well, I, I, first of all, I, I'm, I'm, a, I, I'm passionate about rugby. I love rugby. And um, growing up in Llanelli, obviously, Scarlets were a big part of our lives, you know, when you were able to watch them. And um, so when I came, first came to Blainer, which is over 20 years ago now, um, I, I joined the rugby club, started playing for them. I played on the, on the wing. I played open side flanker for a while. Um, I have to admit your admission. I was not the best rugby player you've ever seen on a pitch. I can assure you, but I, I give I give it a go. I got knocked about, bashed about, and I, but I enjoyed it. The camaraderie amongst the the other players in the club. Some who still, well, more all of them are still very close friends of mine. I'm still, you know, drinking the rugby club. I yeah, I've been raising money for them more recently for the new clubhouse that they're developing uh, up on the on Central Park. And I just got really involved in the community. And as you know, at the heart of any Welsh community, when you play rugby for a local team, you, you, you're you, straight away, you, you, you're, you know, you, you're adopted, you're, you're an integral part of the community. And, and that was pretty much it. I went on then to, when I retired from rugby, because my knees were giving way at my age, because I'm only 45 now, but I, I was getting older. Um, I then took on a, a job as the uh, senior fitness coach for Abertleri Excelsior's football club. Um, so they were a former Welsh Premiership team, and then they got demoted. So I ended up then um, coaching them and f- became the first team uh, fitness coach and, and all that kind of stuff for them. And that was great. So I did three seasons of that. And then I started a Vets football team for Nanty Glow, which is in the community again, a different part of the valley that I'm in. Um, the Vets was for the old Forgies, a slot to co- so continue playing football, as it were. And so, yeah, I've been doing a lot in the community like that. And of course, the work with the rehabilitation work I've been doing, I've been helping a lot of people on the streets as well. And so I've, I've always been involved in supporting, helping, encouraging people within communities. And I think it stems from my background because, you know, I, I always believe people deserve a second chance. People deserve an opportunity. Someone can create an opportunity for them to, to do something good with their lives. And because I was afforded that opportunity, I think everything I do seems to come from that, that I want to help people. Um, and I think, not talking about politics today, but the politics side, I mean, what is a politician? A politician really should be there to help people. <laughs> That's their job. That's what they're elected to do. So for me, it wasn't about being a politician. It was continuing what I've always done, that's to care for my community, be passionate for local initiatives and things like that, and support people when they really need it the most, when they're at their most vulnerable. Absolutely. And I, I completely agree about the, to me, the most important thing is team sport. That's always been the most important part of my life. Mm. And it's an environment in which nobody judges and everybody's welcome, and particularly in a rugby team, you got the little fat bloke, you got the tall yeah. skinny bloke. You, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. you, you played on the wing, I played on the foot. Yeah, court. well, we, we, you know, there's a lot of the action as and, and there's some highlights because Mike Ruddock, who was into yeah. Welsh International, well, he, I remember because uh, he, he played at Blainer, that obviously way before my time. And uh, I remember him coming to do a coaching session once and it was snowing. I remember it. It was, I mean, the snow was about that high off the ground. And I thought, my God, how, why are we training on this? It's ridiculous. But we did, you know, come rain, snow, show. We did, we trained. And I remember him, um, he was going, talking about going into the tackle and clearing out with a ruck or a mauler. And he said, he was giving us techniques and it was the old neck roll, which is illegal now. And he was showing us how to do that. And uh, he was jackling over somebody, over the ball. And he said, come on, Rich, try and take me out. And if you've seen him, he's about seven foot ten. You know what I mean? He's massive. And he's built like a shed, you know. So I went in, running. And I'm quite, I'm not fat, but I'm not skinny, but I'm kind of medium size. You know, I went running in and I grabbed him over the, the back of his arms and tried to neck roll him or roll him over. I couldn't budge him. I could, and all he did was laugh, laugh at me. So I've had a Welsh international laugh at me. So, you know, I've got some great memories. We used to go on tours with the boys, you know, and they were, you know, good drinking sessions and singing sessions and, you know, just absolutely fantastic. And they're great memories, memories that really, that will stay with me for the rest of my life. Absolutely. And as every, anybody knows who's ever been on a tour, what goes on tour. <laughs> Stays on tour, yeah. So, um, 
again, sort of not going to politics, but you're very much, so that's your kind of, you know, the, like the social side of community, but you, you mentioned you're very involved in the community, community at a more sort of social level. What are you, what are the issues that you're finding on the street? So again, not about the politics or no. how you, what, what, you know, what's the environment? What are, what are, what are the problems people face? I, I think, you know, poverty and deprivation are massive in the valleys. Um, you know, I've had the opportunity, thankfully, through, through my life, I've traveled the world, you know, been to the US multiple times, Australia, or I've been to, you know, different parts of Europe. I've traveled, I've been very fortunate. And I've seen, you know, when you have a more of a global perspective of the world and you see other cultures and people, it, and you come back to your own little valley in South Wales and you see the struggle that people are in, the sense of depression that people are in. And, you know, it's it's all around. Uh, and we're, yet Wales is, is a beautiful place. The people are beautiful. You know, it's not the people, it's the circumstances that many people find themselves in. The life is really hard here. And I know it's hard in other parts of the world as well, but everything has its context. And I think, you know, the, the social deprivation here in Wales is is pr quite profound. And it does have an impact because people then turn to drinking heavily and taking, you know, substances to make themselves feel better. And I suppose a lot of people struggle day to day. And that's what I see, you know, uh, from parents, you know, down at the, the football club or the rugby club that they're, they're good, honest people that want to make a, a living, but there's few opportunities. There's not, there's not many jobs here. You know, people have to leave Wales literally not just you know go to a different part of it leave wales to find decent work and it's it's a tragedy really and i think it's something that i would like to get involved in trying to change to make a difference and i suppose getting involved in some shape of politics in one way or another has been one way of trying to do that jake so yeah i think that it's 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 quite sad really yeah and i and i, I certainly found some really deprived areas and I, there was one they were out campaigning in, in Hull and there was um not going to talk about the, the specific topic but I'd it's the, I'd it's the first time in my life I'd ever seen such sort of desperation in somebody's voice they were talking about the issues they were facing and mm. I sound a very privileged background and it, it was so deep in them and you know real sense of desperation I, and I think the answer I mean there is no answer rather than it being a collective effort. It has to be, you know, agencies, community, rugby club, local authority, people. But it it has to be a community effort to make a to make a difference, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, th I think that is why, you know, grassroots clubs, you know, whether it be sport or any other kind of clubs, are essential to any community to to the people that live and work there. Because without them, what else do they have? I mean, you know, we've. We've seen, you know, across, certainly in my area here where Blind Eye went, where I stood as a candidate, you know, the the poverty levels are high. One in three children, uh, you know, live in poverty here in, in Blind Eye Gwent. And things that were shutting down, you know, community centres were shutting down. This isn't because of Westminster now. This is because, obviously, because we have a devolved administration. There were things closing down all the time. And so when anything opened up or there was a sense of, you know, let's do something, I always try to jump on the bandwagon and help and support in any way I can, because I think it's essential for not just my generation, but, you know, my children and our children's children, the next generations, they need to have services provided for them. It needs to be things that create this community spirit. And I think it's an essential part of any community, no matter where you are in the UK. And, I, I, I've, and I've always been a big advocate for it. So start to so you have you have five children. Yes. So four four boys and a girl, is that correct? Yes. Well it was easy making them, it's hard to keep in them, I can tell you. Um yes, four boys and one girl. <laughs> um, so who's your favorite? <laughs> I shouldn't say that, should I? I'm not supposed to say that. My daughter, my my daughter, my daughter probably, because she's the youngest as well. So yeah, and, and the wife wanted to keep going until we had a girl. So that's why we got five. So it's her fault. <laughs> uh, my daughter's name is Faith. Yeah. Faith Sean Taylor. So there's the Welsh name in there, Sean. Yeah, I don't put that in there. Um and what do they feel about dad being my children are grown up, so uh, you know it's kind of slightly. How do they feel about seeing you on television? Well, on the my eldest is now twenty-one. He's working. Uh, the second one is nineteen. He's in college, um, doing uh, computer science and some other stuff. And 
So they 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 kind of men in their own rights now, in their own way, in their own world. Um, I think they. They, they love their dad, of course. I, I think they, they're intrigued by the stuff that I get up to, the things that I do, the things that I'm involved in. Um, they always ask questions. I remember during the, the whole Brexit campaign thing, uh, we had these Brexit T-shirts. And uh, in fact, my daughter still wears a Brexit T-shirt to bed. <laughs> Change politics for good on it. It's hilarious. Um, it's like, because it's so long ago. It was one of those large ones we had in the boxes. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I mean, they... They're kind of involved with it, really, because my, I remember my son saying to me, he said, Dad, if you if you get elected or he said when you get elected, because he thought it was definitely going to happen. You know, kids are like they believe, you know, um, he said, can you build a skate park for us? Can you, you know, and he's coming up with all these ideas of what I could do if I became a politician. I was elected as a politician so I could do for the community. So, I mean, they're kind of involved in it, really. It's a family thing, really. I think my wife's the same. She's very supportive of it. You know, she she'll do anything that, that helps to support my campaigning or whatever it is I'm involved in. She's they're very, very supportive of it, Jake. Yeah, well, that's it's it's it feels like a sort of family effort and the way you you know conduct yourself and with Jill's involvement. And so that's it's a really nice thing. So just a couple of last questions. I want you to just talk just briefly about your your values, because that's, you know, that's something we, we discuss them anyways but just but i want you to keep it brief yeah, yeah. so yeah, just, just well about if if i could put it the, the first thing would always be this always fight for those who are less fortunate that's 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 rooted in me because of course of what we've talked about so you know finding people who are the most vulnerable i'm wanting to support them and help them realizing that their life matters as well and that they can not only change but they have the potential to help others to change as well and they can be instrumental in shaping communities because they've been there got the t-shirt got the book as they say and they've they've learned some valuable lessons that others can learn from so i've always that's 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 the basis of everything really all, all of the values flow from that you know treating others as you expect to be treated um, having faith that people can change and fighting for those who are less fortunate um, always always putting money on the underdog always believing that great champions are not the ones inside but the ones outside you know think things like that for me are very important they they shape everything i i say i do i think about you know uh, and i think it's something that i've not kind of adopted that as a value it's come through my life's experience jake yeah and i, I think for me that i mean obviously it was amazing the retreat that you went to and you talked about the support you were giving given there but it's ultimately there needs to be something inside the person mm. to sort of climb out of that of course you were in an environment where there was some support and obviously some amazing people who helped you to change your life but ultimately the reality is it you know a lot of people are not able to help themselves are they when they're in that situation so for me playing that back to you it, it takes a really really special person even though the the opportunity, the possibility to turn things around. It's it's lucky to be given that opportunity, but you have to be a really, mm. really special person and like something deep inside you to be able to seize that. So I wish you, I wish you all the very best for future. We might do another one. We'll yes, definitely. Let's do. I, I listen. I've enjoyed. It. I've been put on the spot a bit because yeah. I've not been. Uh, you know, didn't know what you were going to ask, and so it's uh, it's always very interesting when the person doing the interviewing is being interviewed. Uh, but I've really enjoyed it, and uh, yeah, it's been absolutely fantastic. And I got some new merchandise as well, Jay. Check it out. <laughs> I've one of those definitely. Well, oh, thank really, you, Jake. Really nice to speak to you. Enjoyed it. Good luck. Keep campaigning hard, and we'll speak again soon. All right, thank you, Jake. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, I was interviewed by Jake tonight. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And uh, who knows, me? Maybe Jake will interview me again on some other subjects like politics. But thanks for tuning in. And Jake, thank you very much for hosting tonight. I really appreciate. It. And I'll catch you all on the next episode of Rich Politics.